Hi everyone, I'm Bailey Wilkinson and this is my report on Lyme disease. So this is a discovery of Lyme disease. Um, Lyme disease was initially discovered in rural Connecticut in 1975. Scientists were confused by what this own, unknown disease fully entailed, although they knew it caused rheumatoid arthritis-like symptoms. In 1981, researcher William Bergdorfer discovered spirochetes in the midguts of deer ticks from nearby forests where Lyme infections were occurring. Upon further testing, Bergdorfer and colleagues found that this is the bacterium causing the unknown disease, aka Lyme disease. And they promptly named this bacteria behind Lyme disease, Borrelia burgdorferi, after William Bergdorfer himself. So where is it found? In the United States, Lyme disease is most frequently found in Northeast, Upper Midwest, Mid-Atlantic, and areas of the Pacific Coast. Um, worldwide, it is also common all over North America, Europe, and Asia. The ticks roll on Lyme disease. Not all ticks carry Lyme disease. Some carry other various vector-borne diseases, while others do not carry or transmit anything at all. The ticks that carry the bacteria that causes Lyme, Borrelia burgdorferi, are the black-legged tick belonging to the Iota's tick family. All of these, there's different types of these ticks, but they appear all over the United States. And these ticks have a mouth part called a hypostome with backward-facing barbs, which is ideal for secure feeding. And infected ticks will jump onto hosts like deer, small birds, rodents, lizards, and of course humans. So what is Borrelia burgdorferi? Borrelia burgdorferi is a spirochete helical bacteria. It's in a corkscrew shape. It includes a flexible cell wall, inner and outer membrane, a long slash cylindrical protoplasm in the cell membrane, and several paraplasmic flagella um, that wraps around the protoplasmic cell cylinder. B. burgdorferi has a unique genome consisting of one large linear chromosome. This chromosome contains approximately 853 genes coding for basic functions such as DNA replication, transcription, translation, as well as transport and metabolic systems. In addition to this chromosome, the bacteria includes 21 other linear and circular plasmids that add an additional 533,000 base pairs of DNA. Um, in nature, animal studies have shown that Borrelia burgdorferi can be found in many organs and tissues, including the skin, brain, heart, joints, bladder, etc., of untreated animals who have um, Lyme disease. And it is also found in animals who receive antibiotic treatment for Lyme disease. Um, it is important to note that B. burgdorferi is not a free living organism, so without a host, it dies quickly. Something unique about B. burgdorferi is its high number of plasmids. Research has shown that bacteria lacking a complete set of plasmids are not able to infect their host. Researchers believe that these plasmids may encode DNA that is virulent. A plasmid named IP25 is necessary for the B. burgdorferi infection. It has been found that a gene BBE22 in IP25 makes it possible for the bacteria to invade the host even once a plasmid is removed making it difficult to get rid of the bacteria in human hosts. Even so, the genome of B. burgdorferi does not contain any obvious genes coding for pathogenesis, so these plasmids are very unique. The relationship between the flagella and the cylindrical cell allows the bacteria to travel through these tissues and viscous fluids in the human body. So in order to fully understand how this bacteria works, we need to expand our knowledge on a tick's life cycle and how ticks transmit Lyme disease from host to host. So they go through four stages of life, egg, larva, nymph, and adult stages. Ticks live about two to three years and survive on blood meals. It's important to note that males cannot, or they do not consume blood, so they cannot contract Lyme disease and they cannot spread Lyme disease. Only female ticks can spread Lyme disease because they have blood meals. Um, most people contract Lyme disease from ticks in the nymphal stage. Um, the nymph stage is one of two stages where the black legged tick can actually transmit the bacteria for, to host, um, the other stage being the adult stage. And upon molting into a new stage, ticks much latch onto new hosts for feeding. So this is how um, B. burgdorferi works. While ingesting new blood, the spirochetes invade the gut of a tick. Being able to achieve dismentation to distal sites and travel throughout the body, some exit the gut into the salivary glands once the tick feeds again. Thus, when the tick bites onto another host, the spirochetes exits the salivary glands and into the bloodstream of the new host. 
So this is um, B, burdurferi, and disease. Another function to note is the outer surface proteins of B. burgdorferi. This bacteria produces many proteins, and it has been believed that the plasmid-encoded proteins could encode antigens that are important virulence factors and or potential vaccinations for Lyme disease. Within infected animals, the bacteria produces OSPC proteins, um, but while inside an unfed tick, it majorly produces OSPA proteins. The bacteria binds to the host proteins in order to utilize them in binding with different tissues throughout the infected host. Due to this difference in producing proteins, the observation gathered is that the bacteria produces different outer proteins to help itself invade specific organisms. These outer proteins are crucial in B. burgdorferi's ability to survive in multiple hosts. By upregulating certain outer surface proteins or attaching itself to tick salivary proteins, the bacteria uses these methods evading the host's immune response. In human immune systems, B. burgdorferi travels into the host's body via the bloodstream. It then invades blood vessels, eluding the immune system in multiple ways by directly inhibiting the host's immune system, changing their outer membrane antigens to avoid recognition and physically hiding within the host tissues. The pathogen continues to replicate, invading the host tissues by penetration of the vascular turf. Once B. burgdorferi has entered the host, it becomes invasive and spreads quickly throughout the body. It has the ability to travel through viscous tissues slash fluids throughout the human body and continues to invade further. Um, for example, it can invade the organs, central nervous system, etc. So symptoms of Lyme disease. I just want to point out that Lyme disease has a wide range of symptoms just depending on what stage you're at. So it really all depends from person to person. But um, early signs of Lyme disease include a developing rash called erythema migraine or EM, which spreads across the area where the initial bite occurs. The bitten area becomes red, but EM is not typically painful, itchy, or hot. It can be warm, but not hot. It's um, usually present within 3 to 30 days after the bite and can appear to have an atypical outline arranging from 5 to 30 centimeters. Flu-like symptoms will also occur, along with fever, sweats, headache, arthralgia, joint pain, weakness, and malaise. Um, this picture shows a uh, tick bite. Um, it can have a bullseye appearance, but it could also just look like a spider and mosquito bite, so you really have to look out for those symptoms. So in the next stage, um, just calling it severe stage, Lyme, it's when it becomes more serious because, um, as I mentioned previously, B. burgdorferi spreads, can spread pretty much everywhere, but it can spread to the nervous system, joints, eyes, skin, and cardiac tissue resulting in light slash sound sensitivity um, can also result in Lyme arthritis and issues with affected organs. Um, if a patient goes untreated, they can develop Lyme neuroborreliosis, which affects the subcortical areas, sub areas of the brain. Untreated Lyme disease leads to a plethora of problems, but many symptoms that come along with severe Lyme disease is centered around the central nervous system, including um, weakness, numbness, Bell's palsy, meningitis, some develop um, POTS, cranial neuritis, depression, nerve root involvement, etc. So Lyme disease has been proven difficult for diagnosis because the initial bite might not develop into the EM rash, and it can just look like a mosquito or spider bite. Um, it also initially causes flu-like symptoms, so many doctors conclude it as that, especially if the rash isn't present. Um, but Lyme disease is officially diagnosed using blood tests. The enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay test is used commonly to diagnose Lyme. However, it can provide a false positive on occasion. If the ELISA test is positive, the Western blot test is used to confirm the result. This test detects antibodies to several proteins of B. burgdorferi. Is it zoonotic? Yes. Borrelia burgdorferi is considered to be a zoonotic pathogen infecting both humans and animals. However, it is unclear how B. burgdorferi affects different mammal hosts as some are more susceptible to the disease than others. For example, studies show that over 90% of mice are exposed to B. burgdorferi by the end of transmission season. Mice will also be infected for their whole lifespan but often show no symptoms of Lyme. 
In domesticated animals like dogs, cats, or horses, Lyme disease symptoms include lameness, lethargy, joint pain, loss of appetite, swollen lymph nodes, and in serious cases, it causes damage to the kidneys, heart, and nervous system. I would suggest checking pets for ticks after being outdoors or in grassy slash woody areas. So worldwide incidents for Lyme. The CDC states that each year, approximately 476,000 Americans are diagnosed and treated for this disease in the United States. Um, previously, they believed that approximately 300,000 Americans were afflicted with Lyme disease. However, that number was changed with more recent information and data. Scientists have estimated at the end of 2020 that 2 million people could suffer from post-treatment Lyme disease. Everyone is susceptible to Lyme disease, however, some people may have stronger immune systems that lessen the effects or happen to show no symptoms at all. Um, people who are frequently outside or live in the area where the black-legged tick inhabits are more likely to get Lyme disease. So, treatment. One aspect that is incredibly unfortunate about this disease is that there is no guaranteed cure for Lyme. Catching Lyme disease early on and receiving the necessary treatment is the most effective way to be absolved from this disease completely. However, you won't truly know until you've gone through the first round of treatment and can see if your symptoms still persist. However, the most common ways early infections can be treated is using antibiotics such as oral medication and intravenous injection. Antibiotics include doxycycline, amoxicillin, penicillin V, and severazine. Penicillin and severazine are usually used for the intravenous method, while um, the others are used for the oral medication method. It is not ideal for patients to develop a tolerance to the drug, so post-infection treatments are typically managed for about two to four weeks. Um, mo more treatments have been presented, like topical creams, but none have been proven to be as effective as those mentioned above. So the treatment, it's easier to obtain treatment in the early stages. However, the majority of insurance companies do not recognize chronic Lyme disease as a le legitimate illness, so they will not pay for long-term treatment. So Lyme disease treatment isn't very accessible to everybody, which is also very unfortunate. So here are the side effects towards the treatment. They include nausea, rash, sun sensitivity, weight loss, diarrhea, hives, hemolytic anemia, and a lower white blood cell count for the intravenous treatment. So post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome, or PTLDS, describes people who still experience chronic Lyme disease symptoms even after antibiotic treatment. The treatment used for early stages of Lyme disease is not used for PTLDS stage. Early treatments could end up harming the PTLDS patients after prolonged use, and it's also non-effective, so their treatment is focused around what symptoms they have and pain management. Some will continue with prescribed drugs that help with one symptom, while others may need more intensive care. Some chronic common symptoms include headaches slash body aches, short-term memory problems, fatigue, weakness, arthritis slash joint pain, heart problems, Bell's palsy, depression, etc. Some more research really needs to be done in order to find an actual cure. Since there is no guaranteed solution when it comes to Lyme disease, if you are infected with Lyme and develop chronic symptoms, it is best to discuss those symptoms with your physician to come up with the best treatment plan for your specific needs because you may have one symptom but not have others, so you just really need to come up with your own treatment plan with your doctor. However, some preventative measures you can take um, when going to areas that are tick infested or just woody grassy areas, it is best to wear pants long leggings, something to cover your legs. You could also use bug spray slash tick spray on ankles, the neck, the arm, just really any vulnerable areas. And be careful in the spring and summertime because those are the seasons where ticks are the most active. Current topics in medical research. So the paper that I researched is titled Novel Targets and Strategies to Combat Borreliosis. So the authors of this paper discuss the potential vaccine candidates and strategies that could fight against Lyme disease. With Lyme disease only increasing worldwide, there are still no cures that are 100% effective. So these strategies include elements of the tick vector, B. burgdorferi itself, and reservoir host. The authors suggest that prophylactic vaccinations would be the ideal choice to treat and prevent Lyme borreliosis, 
The only licensed vaccine to hit markets was a three-dose injection called Limer IX. I'm not really sure I pronounce it. I think it's either that or Limer, Limer X. However, it was only available for four years as it was proven to have adverse side effects and Lyme disease symptoms still persisted in patients. There are vaccines that are currently under clinical development as of now, but one vaccine that has shown potential is the VLA-15 vaccine, so maybe we'll see something um, about that vaccine in the future. Another approach that the author suggests is to use the protein OSPA and B. burgdorferi and transfer that from the tick vector and expose human monoclonal antibodies to the disease in hopes that the spirochetes will stop um, spreading. But the last alternative strategy that the author suggests is to find a way to prevent ticks from feeding, um, to prevent the many diseases that the different species of ticks spread, although this method seems even more challenging than the ones I mentioned above. In my opinion, I do agree with the author's conclusion. They basically just point out the potential vaccine candidates and just basically reiterate that that is the best way to eradicate Lyme disease. That's the best way to cure people from Lyme disease is by using vaccines, which I do agree with. But there also needs to be uh, more steps involved, more clinical trials and research, and just like more knowledge on Lyme disease in general. But that brings me into my next slide, public health interventions. As I mentioned, while there are various strategies and treatments being developed for Lyme disease, vaccination still seems to be the most effective method in preventing this infection. And the authors really state it best. They state, in order to effectively control the spread of Lyme borreliosis, a multi-front battle should seriously be considered involving environment management, wildlife, and domestic animal vaccination, and of course, policy making. Some public health interventions um, that I suggest um, to decrease the spread of this disease, there needs to be more research done and clinical trials. And um, the public should be made aware of, of the dangers of Lyme borreliosis and the best ways to prevent a tick bite. The Global Lyme Alliance is a leading 501c3 organization that is dedicated to conquering Lyme disease. They fund research and focus on education, awareness, and patient service programs to improve the lives of people struggling with Lyme. They've also awarded over 13 million for Lyme disease and other tick-borne illnesses. They also have partnered with the Lyme Disease Association in 2007 to fund and create the first ever research center for Lyme disease studies at Columbia University Medical Center in New York City. Um, the Global Lyme Alliance organization offers financial aid to those who struggle with tick-borne illnesses and they also provide grants. Right Out Lyme is a nationally recognized grant. Um, Global Lyme Alliance provides grants to adults who are 26 and older. They provide to those who meet the criteria and need a financial assistance for treatments, medication, and doctor's visits. The criteria is basically anybody diagnosed with Lyme disease in the United States of America, age 26 and older, and can, and can demonstrate a qualified financial need. So this is my research question. How is Borrelia burgdorferi transferred from tick into human host? And these are my references.